Perik HaMakabal Sadim Echaveru, Dav Kuf Test, sponsored the Rafu Shalemu for Leib Sender Ben Chaya Soru. We begin with the Mishnah. If a tenant farmer leases land for less than seven years, he cannot plant flax or cut sycamore beans. A tenant farmer is obligated to return leased land without the owner suffering an unavoidable loss. Planting flax is profitable but depletes land for seven years. Sycamore branches take seven years to grow back. However, if he leased the land at least for seven years, he can plant flax and cut sycamore branches. The Gemara brings a machlokus abayin rava concerning the rights of the farmer to shvach, improvements to the trees during these six years. Abayah holds that the growth of new branches is part of the leased field's yield. Although he cannot cut the branches, he is entitled to their increased value. Rava holds the increased size of the trees is part of the tree, not produce. According to Rava Brisa, that teaches the owner must assess produce that he cannot give to the farmer when he finishes his contract, refers to vegetables before the market day, not branches of sycamores. Rav agrees where the farmer loses, he is entitled to the improvements. The Gemara brings a case where Rav Papa leased land to grow asphasta. Palm saplings sprouted on part of the land. He could not cultivate it. Rav Shisha entitled him to compensation according to what he would have planted in place of the saplings. However, if the saplings sprouted through rocky soil, he could not have cultivated. He is not entitled to compensation. The Gemara explains why we cannot learn the tenant farmer is entitled to improvements from the law of Yovel that the purchaser keeps the improvements. The Torah states, Yotzamim Karbai is teaching the initial item sold, the house or land, returns to the original owner, not the improvements. The purchaser would have kept the land in perpetuity had it not been for Hashem's decree. It makes sense that he should at least hold on to the improvements. However, in our case, the tenant farmer never acquired ownership. The Gemara discusses the law of a shtil, a planter. This is one, hired to develop land such as planting vines, not just working an existing vineyard, as do tenant farmers and sharecroppers. He has a permanent lease entitled to half its yearly yield, unless he causes a loss to the owner who can dismiss him. Even then, he must pay him half the value of the improvement. If the planter dies, the owner is not obligated to hire his heir, but still must pay him half the improvements. The Gemara brings a machlokus Rav Kahana, Rav, Yehuda, and Rava regarding a planter who states he will leave causing, if he causes the owner a loss. Rav Yehuda holds by stating his intention it was to forego the improvements. Rav Kahana holds he receives the improvements unless he forgoes them explicitly. Rav holds he is entitled to the improvements even if he forgoes them explicitly. This is a case of asmachta. The planter's intention is to express to the owner confidence in his work, not to relinquish his rights. Forfeiting improvements is different than a sharecropper's genuine claim to compensate an owner, owner for not working a field. According to Rav, a planter does not have to be warned prior to dismissal. Hired workers such as planters, teachers of children, butchers, sofri, ma'alim, who make mistakes that cause irretrievable losses to their employers, do not require prior warning to dismissal. We mentioned earlier that the planter's lease is as long as the vineyard produces. The Gemara now discusses the law regarding a planter's share of improvements who decides to leave his job prematurely while the vineyard is still productive. The owner does not have to pay half the improvements to the planter since the owner has to hire a sharecropper who will take yearly a percentage of the profit, generally a third for a vineyard. Although the owner now receives two-thirds of the grapes, it will not compensate the loss he suffered paying half of the improvements to the planter. Ravashi holds the planter receives a fourth of what remains with the owner after he hires a sharecropper. Ravacha holds the planter receives a quarter of the whole amount as long as the vines belong to him. He would be responsible to tend them and not the sharecropper hired by the owner. Gemar brings another qualification to the law that the planter is entitled to half the improvements. The planter is entitled to half the improvements only if the vines produce normally. Vines uprooted by a flood an unusual occurrence are viewed as dying prematurely and the planter is entitled only to a quarter of the improvements. The Gemara now discusses the law of the vines regarding a lender who received a vineyard as a mortgage for a loan. If the debtor mortgaged the produce of his vineyard for 10 years and as expected, the vineyard dries up after five, it is a machlokus abaya rav if the lender is entitled to the vines as additional payment towards the loan. Abaya holds vines and produce of the vineyard, so a lender is entitled to them as well. However, if the vines dry up prematurely, they are principal and not produce, just as in the case of a planter. Rava holds that they are principal and not produce. The vines must be sold for a purchase of land where the lender continues to collect produce as payment for the loan. The rights of the planter to the vines are unique. They are considered produce because he planted and cultivated them. This is not the case with the lender. 
If you're enjoying Daffin 5, please subscribe.